The following program is an exclusive presentation of Prime Sports. Dome in Tacoma, Washington. Prime Sports brings you the 26th NAIA Division II Football National Championship game. After being played in Portland the last three years, the championship game moves up I-5 to Tacoma, and today is showdown between the Oilers of Finley of Ohio and the Wildcats of Central Washington. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett, along with Cleet Casper. Welcome to today's NAIA Division II Championship. Last time there'll be a Division II as everyone gets combined next season. Central Washington in the title game for the first time, and their offense revolves around quarterback John Kitna. Well, Kitna is coming back home to Tacoma from Lincoln High School here, and he's fired up to light this stadium up. He's got a sensational senior year going and also is set to basically eclipse almost all of the NIAI records. You see his passing percentage there of 63%, and he only needs 163 yards to break the career passing record in the NAIA. So you'll see the ball in the air. Kitten is in charge. 39 school records, 23 league records, four national records. He'll set two more today. Quite the attack. They've faced three of the top ten defenses in the last three weeks in the playoffs and averaged over 570 yards a game. Today they meet the number one defense in the country in Finley. The Oilers will have quite a challenge if they're going to be successful. One guy to watch is Ray Long. Well, Ray Long is a guy who's used to coming in and taking on Big Ten type of teams where they come at you with a fullback and an eye back. Here he'll see a lot of wide receivers and backs out of the backfield. I expect him to be active and perhaps coming to try and put pressure on, fin on the... Uh, Central Wildcat offense coming right up the middle and putting pressure on Kitna. Now, while Central throws the ball a lot, boys at the opposite side of the coin for Finley, we're talking a ground attack, wishbone power that averages more than 82% of their offensive attack. Well, the exact opposite, but these guys get it done. Bo Hurley, the quarterback, really is the operator giving the ball to people like Shelton and Jaeger. They're going to be between the tackles, a lot of ISO with backs leading in coming up on the linebackers and falling in behind them with the running back. So a team that is not explosive from the standpoint of getting a lot at one time, but they'll just march the ball and control the ball. And that's why their defense is so good. Offense has the ball the whole game. It is power football. Finley won this crown in 1992. They're back again. Central's coach is a little bit worried. They say hey, we haven't seen a wishbone in 15 years. If Central's defense is to shut down this ground attack of Finley, Scott LeMaster a key for the Wildcats. The Wildcats are a much lighter team than Finley. They're going to have to move move around, stunt, blitz, and LeMaster's going to have to come from his linebacker position and perhaps get some pressure, mix things up in the backfield. So uh, have to resort to quickness and a uh, little style, perhaps. Yeah, you don't think the old quarterback's excited about one passing attack and one rushing attack? Going to be a big offensive show, maybe. We expect to see a lot of points on the board, and it's going to be two different styles of getting there. It should be really fascinating and fun football to watch. We'll be back to introduce you to the two teams. Get ready for the opening kickoff from the Tacoma Dome right after this on Prime Sports. By the Northwest Intercollegiate Officials Association. And welcome back to Tacoma. Just about ready to get underway for this championship game between Finley and Central Washington. Central Washington Wildcats in their first ever. NAIA championship game. There's their head coach, Jeff Zenisek, in his fourth year, has a record of 30 and 12, 4 and 1 in postseason, the former defensive coordinator for the Wildcats. And uh, in sizing up his opponents today, the Finley Oilers, uh, Jeff said he was concerned about Finley's size, but also felt that playing indoors on turf gave his team a little bit of an advantage. But to see their size and see what they do with the football is, um, they really control the football. Uh, they get a lot of different people running the football, three or four backs uh, that have about the same yardage, that type of thing. And, and their offensive line just manhandles people in the playoffs. That's, you know, what they did. They just manhandled that line of scrimmage. So, you know, we're going to have to do a lot of things. I think the good thing we got going for us is we're on turf. And uh, our kids are smaller, but they're quicker. And so we're going to have to use that to our advantage. 
Central's eighth appearance in the playoffs overall, and as we mentioned, their first title game. They've uh, been in the playoffs four out of the last five years. Meanwhile, Finley's coach, Dick Strom, in his 21st season as the head coach. The Oilers runners-up in 78, champions in 79 and 92. He's fourth in career winning percentage among coaches with more than five years of coaching in the NAIA. Dick Strom sized up Central prior to the game, and he said, of course, his concern begins with John Kitna. He's a great quarterback, and but he's got some good people to go with him. You know, the big fullback Christian kid is a, you know, he can catch the ball at 43 receptions, come out of the backfield. One receiver has 87 receptions. The two tight ends together have 69 total. The other right receiver has 50-some. And, I mean, you don't key on anybody, you know. You don't key on anybody. I, I, I would say, and I, I really, somebody asked me this question the other day, and I, I think I'm safe saying this. This is probably the best offensive football team I've faced in my 21 years. Quite a tribute there, Cleet, to a Central's attack. It's almost the Lou Holtz <laughs> approach. You know, these guys are so good, we shouldn't even be on the field. Uh, again, we talked about a little bit in the opening. Two very contrasting styles on offense. And the key, I think, for Central is to be able to get out top early. They'll be receiving the kickoff here uh, to start this football game. And if they can go down and score, put a little pressure on it, certainly help their defense and being able to control the wishbone attack of the Oilers. So we mentioned this, the championship game of the NAIA playoffs after the 16-team tournament began. We'll tell you a little bit about the path to the playoffs. First for Finley on the left, defeated a uh, Northwest Power and uh, Pacific Lutheran team, which made the championship game the last two years. Come from behind victory there. A come from behind victory in the semis over Malone College. And then last week at Lambooth of Tennessee, a big romp for Finley, 63-13. Meanwhile, Central avenging a regular season loss by knocking off previous number one Western Washington. A victory on the road at Hardin-Simmons. And then last week in Puyallup, a big victory over Mary of North Dakota by a 48-7 margin to make it to the title game. Just about ready to get things underway. Finley won the toss, elected to defer to the second half, so Central will get the ball as Cleet mentioned. The kickoff underway from Tom Sellers, going to be taken by Jay Spears for Central. Gets out near the 25-yard line before he's knocked down. Roger Hamilton leading the way on the tackle for Finley, assisted by Mike Kanopka, the third-team quarterback playing special teams. And got to do that with 48 guys on a squad. And there's John Kitno back in his hometown, Cleet. Well, again, we talked about a little bit. Coming back to the T-Dome in front of uh, friends and family, the home field advantage really a key part there. And uh, you see his numbers. Eight games with more than 300 yards passing this season, and he'll get the attack underway on first. Trying to scramble in great pursuit to close him down in a hurry, coming from Ray Jackson, the nose guard. Coverage sack that time. Kitna actually had plenty of time to throw the ball, but... Uh... The backfield for Central, Christian, a good running back, along with Woodard, Henderson, Rousseau, the school record holder at one flanker. The front line park in Sittler, Malmberg, South and Dahl on second down for the Wildcats. That's Dolan Holt, tight end in motion. And the first ball carry for Jamie Christian. This coming against a defensive unit now, Cleet, that gives up less than two yards per rush in the Finley defense. Well, Powers comes up from his linebacker position and puts the hit on there, and a nice job by the uh, defense there to stave off the blocks and allow the linebackers to make the tackle. Across the front, a gun to Brookins, Garner, Jackson, Arnold, and Barbara, a monster man position. Both these teams use a monster. Long and Powers, the linebackers. Powers with the last stop. In the secondary, Oster, Williams, and a big change for Finley, Nate Wyrow, their top defensive back, who's been injured, got cleared earlier in the week and is starting. He wasn't supposed to play at all. Third and long for the Wildcats, Kitna stepping up. Got a little bit of a deflection on the ball as he had a clear pocket, and Chad Moxley, I think, uh, no, it was Ray Long, rather, who got a piece of it, the young man we featured off the top. Long in there, uh, providing some pressure along with Chris Garner, the weak defensive tackle, and uh, Finley's defense three and out here in the first possession. Well, Finley's decision to defer the kick and uh, go ahead and kick off works out well, and they should have pretty good field position. Greg Stoller to punt for Central. You saw Kyle Macy back for Finley. Stoller's kick bouncing away from Macy. He'll take it just outside the 35. And a fine 
stick head on there as he gets a short return. Rico Iniguez with the uh, hit, and that brings a roar from the Central Washington fans on the far side of the field. Well, now we'll get a look at Bo Hurley, who engineers this wishbone attack that, uh, like we talked about, really is power football. There's also going to be a penalty tacked on to that return. So they'll lose some of that excellent field position that their defense had given them with a big 10-yard holding call. A block in the back on the return team. First down. Jim Buchanan, our referee for today's championship game. Scott Cordell, the umpire, Tim Davis, head linesman, Charles Mitchell, the line judge, Merle Hagbo, the field judge, Dan Malcolm, the side judge, Mike D'Angelo is the back judge, the officials assigned by the Northwest Intercollegiate Officials Association. Early last week, three touchdowns running, passed for one, and that's one of just five touchdown passes he's thrown this season. from the power attack and the first carry for Robert Shelton picks up nearly eight. Aaron Mall, linebacker for Central on the stop. And the backfield now for Finley, Bill Yeager, Robert Shelton, Troy Pearson. Shelton, 1,055 yards this season. Dills and Allen won't get thrown too much, they know it. Cromer, Berger, Ulm, May, and Dietz across the front. Dietz, a two-time national champion, football and wrestling for Finley, looking to get another ring. Second and short for the Oilers. Troy Pearson called the three-back in the offensive alignment for Finley. He'll be stopped just short of the first down. Front line for Central, Andy Luanga, Sean Rakovich, Yushin Santori, and Keith Larson. Lamaster and Mall at the backers, Craig Bill, the uh, monster man. In the secondary, Montre Bacon, Michael, Coinus, and Bowie. Third and inches for the Oilers. Keeper by Hurley, and the end of the clear, we see some good speed by Bo Hurley as he picks up plenty of extra yardage along with the first down and called down along the sidelines finally chased down by the free safety Gary Michael but for Bo Hurley Cleet that's a gain of about 25 yards and he's shaken up down on the near sideline well he's grabbing his left knee as you can see there and uh, one of the situations that coach Strom absolutely did not want to see you see he gets sprawled out there in his prone position and that is a scary looking end of the play there for Bo Hurley and you see the trainer for Finley working away and hopefully it's just something that's a little bit sore. You can see the leg kind of get pinned back a little bit on the turf uh, and we have a timeout on the field with 11 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the first quarter of the NAIA championship game. We're scoreless in Tacoma. To Tacoma, Andy Booth steps in at quarterback now for Finley. We'll talk a little bit more about Bo Hurley in a moment. A first down at the Central Washington 35 yard line. And the give to Troy Pearson. When you're a backup quarterback, Clayton, you got the line open and holes like that, it makes stepping in a little easier. Well, handing off the ball and uh, looking at a wide open freeway down the middle of your football field is a nice, pleasant way to start off a series. There you see Andy Booth, only a sophomore. Average is over seven and a half yards a carry. He's rushed 21 times this year. And there you see his passing statistics. He has two touchdowns as well, so has been effective throwing the ball when he's been called upon to do so. Bo Hurley still being checked on the bench, and as you see, a gain of nine for Pearson, who rushed for 117 yards and two touchdowns last week. A little cross buck for Bill Yeager. He'll get inside the 25 to pick up the first down before he's dropped. Scott Lamaster on the stop for Central Washington, along with Aaron Mall. While we've got a quick second here, we want to welcome all our viewers joining us on Continental Cablevision in Finley, Ohio. Glad that you're able to join us and see your Oilers in action as they go for another national championship. And right now, they're beginning to knock on the door as they get down near the red zone with another first down at the Central 24. Good 
Booth on the keeper met by a wave of red that time. Sean Rakovich leading the tacklers for Central. Craig Bill up from the monster spot as well. And Andy Luanga also in as uh, we get a look at Bo Hurley down on the sidelines. At least he's putting some weight on that leg. Yeah, he's still a little unsteady there. Uh, hopefully it's something he can shake off and, and get back into this championship game. Hate to see him go his whole season and have a fine year and then not be able to finish it out. Here's the situation that uh, Central's trying to get the Oilers in. Get them into second and long, third and long situations and stay away from that power running game. Make them throw it. They break the bone for the first time and just throw a quick out to the back. One-on-one -on -one coverage on Bill Yeager, and he's dropped in the flat in a big hurry. Stop made by Gary Michael, the free safety. Again, this is just... A pretty limited passing attack that Finlay has. They're going to try to spring a running back out into the flat and hopefully get a mismatch there. But nice job of Michael staying with his assignment, getting out, putting a good pop on there. Really only a one yard gain, so third and 11. Uh, again, you got to think that this is a passing down, but with Finley, uh, there may be some type of draw in their repertoire. They're really a running oriented team. Jaeger, the halfback, goes into the slot inside of Ben Dills. They're both split to the right. Trying to throw a screen back left. Now they'll throw a middle screen. It's juggled and grabbed on the interception by Central. Right through the hands of Troy Pearson. And Sean Rakovich is the man who comes up with the gift, the defensive tackle. Well, turnovers are what turn champions into championship teams. Rakovich just really the beneficiary of a bobble that pops up into the air. Booth does a nice job faking the screen, then coming back to the fullback in the middle. But the hands aren't there again not a passing football team and that's outside their comfort zone central with a big turnover turning away the Findlay drive central washington plus 11 on turnover ratio for the season plus four in the playoffs as both these teams have benefited from turnovers central with the ball for the second time kitna with plenty of room looking deep out of bounds and into the uh, kicking net as he uh, went a little bit wide trying to find his favorite target, Kenny Rousseau, the young man who leads all the receivers in every category. Well, Coach Zenesek said that they're going to try to score from every place on the field, and that's just an example of it. Try to follow up the turnover with a big play and uh, getting a nice protection, stepped up in the pocket, but really just led his receiver out of bounds. Had him for a minute. Demetrius Boykin on the coverage for Finley. There's a look at Dick Strom, obviously a little bit concerned with his starting quarterback out of the game right now. Rusaw, the motion man. Trying to get it on the uh, crossover pattern and thrown a little bit wide by Kitna. Coverage that time by Ray Long for Finley. So we're seeing the backer in the pattern. We, we talked about this a guy's ability to tackle, and here he does a really nice job. Just times this pass perfectly and undresses. Rusa. So now third down and ten. So far Central yet to pick up a first down. Been held in check so far by the Finley defense. Trips formation for the Wildcats and Kitna on the scramble trying to find someone again. Great coverage downfield. Close to and will pick up the first down now as he, uh, on second effort, spills forward. And this is what we heard about Kitna. Most of his rushing yards come off the scrambles. The Oilers drop back into a, a zone-type defense on third and ten and allow just four people to come after Kitna. Kitna finds a little seam after nothing opens downfield and just does a great job. Really a sensational effort. Makes a couple moves, shows a little speed, shows a little quickness, and then shows some strength avoiding the tackle and picks up the first down. So that's a big break uh, for Central. Just need a little momentum, get some field position, maybe open it up a little more. Great help block to spring him free for that. Now a quick toss into the flat to pick up some extra yardage. A little noise along the sideline. That one completed to Josh Woodard, halfback, who averages better than 10 yards a reception for Central. Josh, also a, a local kid here from Auburn, Washington. I'm sure his folks are in the stand. Just throwing a, a quick little delay and, and hope to get good
good blocking by the wide receivers. Woodard got the football out on the other side of his hand, on the outside hand, so he can stiff arm and pick up a couple others. So good first down pickup. Woodard switched over from defensive back, second and short. That one very underthrown, and Larry Williams can't come up with the wounded duck. Kitna signaling to his wide receiver that you ran the wrong pattern as he's pointing down the field. And I've seen that a couple times here, Cleet, that last scramble for John. There were a couple receivers running together, so some pattern problems. Well, regardless of whether the wide receiver runs the route correctly or not, it looks like this ball is floated up and comes off his hands funny, and that one should have been picked up. Larry Williams was right there. So a break for Central in a third and short situation after a possible turnover. Good read on the screen and plenty of room for Jamie Christian. He'll finally get knocked out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Ray Long pushing him out there, but a simple, effective route for the Central Wildcats. Really nicely done, and credit Kitna a little bit with selling the, the screen or the delay. Christensen out of the backfield. He's just going to delay a little bit. The rush comes up. Kitna looks straight downfield and keeps the linebackers in the middle of the field and good blocking by the wide receivers again. Dennis Erickson's nephew there running down the field with that football. The Seattle Seahawks head coach Christian three years at Fresno State before he moved to Central Washington. See a good look at Christian. going to be interesting. We talked all about Central's offensive numbers off the top, but Finley with a very strong defense last week gave up just 204 yards of total offense and forced eight turnovers, and they'll get their second sack of Kitna as again the rush breaks down, and Howard Heston, defensive end reserve, comes up with the tackle, his fifth sack of the season. Well, Kyle Parkin, as you see at the, the defensive numbers for the Oilers, number one in the NAIA rankings. That total defense breaks down to just over three yards per play, and they also average nearly eight tackles per loss a game. Here's one of them. Well, Heston just was able to go over the top as Parkin tried to cut him. Tried to throw a little underneath screen once again for Josh Woodard and broken up on a pretty good read by the strong linebacker, Mike Powers, who got inside the blocking wall. Pretty risky little play there, though, if he doesn't make that tip. That ball can be caught and moved down the field. Woodard coming out of the backfield again on the delay. See if Powers doesn't make this play here. He's out of position, and there's convoy of... And the wall's there, yeah, right? Yeah, the convoy is yeah. there to escort him down the field, so it was wide open. That's something that Central could come back to, and Kitna just rushed that ball just a little bit, had time to wait and let that play develop a little bit more to the middle of the field because they had the linebackers flowing away. We have a timeout on the field here at the Tacoma Dome, 4.53 to play in the first quarter. No score in the championship game between Finley and Central Washington. Welcome back to Tacoma. The officials conferring on this near sideline and uh, talking to the officials up in the press box. And it looks like they're going to raise the uh, clock time back up. That apparently was our reason for the stop. Central's got a nice little drive going here. They've been able to take advantage of the underneath routes. And there you see the distinct contrast between these two teams. Central, the whole lot of yards through the air and typical of this drive so far. Nothing on the ground except for Kitna's rush. 